skip down uh, 14 years later, I've got type two diabetes and uh, I have no idea what to do and I'm getting fatter and all this stuff. And I had seen Richard uh, on Facebook uh, flaunting <laughs> his weight loss and new oh, health yeah. <laughs> and rubbing it in the nose of the Australian uh, Diabetes Association, which had told him to do exactly the opposite of what he did. That's right. <laughs> and I said, you know what? This guy's a genius. I want to get me some of that. They say a journey begins in a single step, or in my case, one less piece of bread. My name is Chad, and I'm your test subject. I have sought out an expert in the field of nutrition and fitness, who I hoped would help me feel, well, well, better. They call him the biohacker, but I call him Eric. I hope you'll join me on a path that leads you and I to optimal fitness as we live our lives in ketosis. This is the Life in Ketosis podcast, a biohacker's guide to optimal body performance. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my quest of achieving optimal body performance with the man that can get me there, the biohacker himself, Mr. Eric Bischoff. Every episode, I'll be sharing my actual results, both successes and failures, as Eric teaches me how to apply the principles of ketogenics and functional movement to look and feel fantastic. Just as a reminder, the first five episodes of this podcast are foundational episodes. So if you haven't listened to those, we encourage you to push pause now, go back, listen to the first five episodes of this podcast to get your foundational knowledge on ketogenics and functional movement, and then come back and join us today. Because today is a great podcast. We have a couple of awesome guests joining us from all over the world. Uh, one is joining us at 2 a.m. So uh, we got to make this one great to make it worth it. <laughs> but I, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the two keto dudes. Now, if you're anywhere in the ketogenic life, uh, society, uh, networks, forums, any of all that kind of stuff, you have probably already heard about the two keto dudes. And uh, we are so excited to have them on the Life in Ketosis podcast uh, because they're going to bring a ton of value to you today, but they're also just super fun guys. Um, they're, they're entertaining to listen to. They're both foodies, so they give incredible recipes, food ideas, all of that kind of stuff. And they're both just super knowledgeable and helpful. So I want to welcome both Carl and Richard to the Life in Ketosis podcast. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. Yeah, good day. <laughs> I love that. Happy to be here. I love having the good day in there. Get I. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I, I mentioned, you can guess where it's two in the morning. Yeah, yeah. not in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> you got to You have a little bit too much energy, Richard, for two in the morning. Yeah, well, this is, I guess, late in my evening. Uh, I, I'm, I have weird cutting patterns, so uh, yeah. <laughs> who knows what my Who knows what my head's doing? I'm, I'm feeling good though. Let's go with this. It might be caffeine, right? It, it, it's actually, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually uh, about 36 hours green into tea. a fast. This is green tea. Yeah. Oh, green tea. Okay. Oh, that, that 36 hours into a fast. I'm about to fly to Denver, oh. Colorado in about uh, another 36 hours. Oh, wow. And by the time I arrive, I'll be five days fasted. So are, are you on a water only fast? Uh, green tea, um, and, okay. and I'll have an espresso in the morning. That's about okay. it. Okay. With but any butter or any of that? Any? Uh, no, no fat. Okay. No fat. Cool. Mm -hmm. I, I've been there, done that. It's good. And, and I know you guys have too. I'm, yeah, I, yeah. Lo I love fasting. But we're heading out to a low carb Breckenridge out in uh, right. Breckenridge, yep. Colorado. Yep. We'll be there mm -hmm. for a few days. Oh, is, that, is that an event that you guys are attending? I, we're not, I'm not yeah. familiar with the low carb Breckenridge. Yeah. yeah, it's just an event, uh, it's, you know, a couple of days of speaking and uh, what we do, Richard and I, is we get our, our friends together for, you know, from the podcast and in our community and we rent a mm. big Airbnb house. So we're cooking and, awesome. and uh, collaborating and comm commiserating and all that stuff. <laughs> There's like a dozen. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's awesome. It really is. So, so do you have a special meal to end that five day fast with or are you going to take it easy on the first meal? <laughs> Um, I think the first meal is uh, pork rind waffles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, there you go. That's how I'm going to break my fast. Uh, we're doing some stuff. We're doing some 
uh, at the house, we're going to be doing uh, pork butt. We're going to be doing a lot of pork, pork butt. Oh, we're wow. doing a lot of cabbage. Uh, I'm doing sous vide salmon, and I'm also doing this recipe that involves meat glue, raw shrimp, and getting it up to temperature. And you basically extrude it out and you make pasta out of pure protein. And uh, so that's uh, and it's <laughs> so amazing. It's shrimp pasta. Yeah, I've made it. I've made it at Carl's place. It was, yeah, uh, it was pretty yeah, good. That, yeah. that, that sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work, though. It sounds like uh, a lot of work. Yeah, but it's I mean, you know, it, it's pasta. You know, it's, yeah, you gotta have it. Gotta have it. Yeah. I know I wasn't invited, but I'll be there. I'm, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just as you guys were talking, I booked my Just flight. Show up. So you're no. gonna be in, you're gonna be in Breck, huh? That's beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I was tempted to go and attend, but other things came up. So I'm familiar with it. It's a good thing. You gotta yeah. be used to not being able to breathe. Yeah, you get yeah. Up that high. It's very high. They actually, <laughs> sell yeah. cans of oxygen at Walmart <laughs> for like a dollar, <laughs> and we were we were sucking those down daily. That's great. So the so let's jump in the two keto dude podcast. Let's talk a little bit about that. Why did you guys? Why don't we? Why don't we start with you, Carl? Why did you guys start the two keto dudes podcast? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll tell you that story. There's two parts of it. There's the diabetes story, yeah, you know, which is sort of drives the content, and then there's a the podcast part. I've actually been a podcaster since August 2002. And That's if early. you look at the history of podcasting, it really didn't start till 2004, 2005. Yeah. So I basically was an NPR junkie and loved the sort of edutainment um, format. You know, I, I loved Saturday afternoons, listening Saturday mornings, listening to all those great shows, car yeah. talk and all that. So um, a software uh, development was what I was really working on and Microsoft had come out with this new platform called .NET just about that time. And I, there was so much to know and so many people knew a lot of stuff and so many people didn't that I just decided to start talking to them in 2002 and put it on, uh, uh, on an MP3 and let people download it. I had a training company, so I had a pretty good following and a website before that in the 90s. So I had, you know, 30,000 people on my mailing list or so, and they just started downloading these things and listening to them. And one thing led to another podcasting came around. I'm a software developer, so I was able to make an RSS feed myself right from my data and, um, you know, skip down uh, 14 years later. I've got type 2 diabetes and uh, I have no idea what to do and I'm getting fatter and all this stuff. And I had seen Richard uh, on Facebook. Uh, flaunting his weight loss and new health oh, yeah. <laughs> and rubbing it in the nose of the Australian uh, Diabetes Association, which had told him to do exactly the opposite of what he did. That's right. <laughs> and I said, you know what? This guy's a genius. I want to get me some of that. And so uh, a mutual friend of ours got uh, prostate cancer, actually, and his wife also wanted to lose weight. So they both went on the ketogenic diet, being inspired by Richard. And I said, you know what? You're doing it. I'm doing it. Um, the cancer story is interesting. He turned out to have beaten it, and he used a ketogenic diet and a hyperbaric uh, chamber, and he did it without radiation or chemotherapy. Um, it, it, by the time they got there, the, it was completely self-contained. They took it out, and he's been cancer-free ever since. year and a half, two years, I guess. Mm. So, uh, I just decided, you know what? Let's... Um, I'll make a podcast about this. And if you don't mind talking to me, Richard, we'll uh, document sort of my progress. So I had lost maybe about 15 pounds when we started. And I progressed all the way down to the end of that year where I had lost 80 pounds. It, and, we uh, actually started this. It was like your second week of yeah, uh, yeah. keto. Right. So we actually captured, if you go back to the first episodes of the keto dudes, you'll actually capture somebody just starting out hmm. and, unsure of themselves and they've done like two weeks worth of it so from your perspective richard why did you guys start the the two keto Tudes podcast so for us it was really a commitment device for carl i mean i had already lost 80 pounds uh my hba1c which is a measure of how much glucose exposure your blood has over a three-month period had gone from 11.2 to 5.2 
So, and that's a significant increase. That that that's reversal of diabetes. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, as Carl said, I was telling everybody about this on YouTube, on on uh, Facebook because the the the, the thing is that uh, it's a very simple treatment for a diabetic, for a type two diabetic. It's a very simple treatment that 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 pretty much guarantees that they're going to uh, get very close to, to, to glucose stasis um, within two or three months. And um, you've got to realize that for a diabetic, um, there are a lot of horrible complications. What got me started in this sort of uh, two years before uh, I started the podcast with Carl was um, my doctor sat me down and said, you know that ingrown toenail that's not healing on your right big toe? That toe may have to come off, and when you have that conversation, that's a, that's 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 that'll sit you back on your bum. That yeah. that conversation, and I knew that you know a decade earlier I'd gone on a low carb diet. I'd done Atkins, and it had helped me lose weight. And I said to the doctor, "I'll make you a wager. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Um, cut bits off, put me on insulin, um, put me on this Genuvia drug that he wanted to put me on." Um, I'll do whatever you want uh, if I can't control my glucose, but give me three months of diet, a, a chance to, to try diet. And I knew that Atkins induction worked for me. And I've, I've been seeing this stuff about um, Tim Noakes had just been, uh, um, I knew, I knew about Tim Noakes and, and he just, gotten into ketogenic diets or banting as he called it and i was just starting to, this was just starting to filter into my consciousness and i said so i said to the doctor give me three months i i went away i came back and uh i'd lost um in the first three months i'd lost probably 50 of that 80 pounds and and he said what are you doing and i said <laughs> um <laughs> I'd rather not tell you right now, but do a blood test and see where we stand. And at the end of the blood test, he says, oh, what have you done? You've, you've reversed your diabetes. And I said, okay, well, what I'm doing is I'm not eating any sugar or starch and I'm not worrying about fat. And I'm getting all my energy from fat and all of it seemed, a lot of it seems to be coming from my body, but I'm eating a lot of fat on my plate as well and I'm not putting on weight. And he said, well, look, I, I, can't, uh, I can't tell you that that's a good, good way to go, but the results speak for themselves. So anyway, long story short, um, uh, I managed to re reverse my diabetes on a ketogenic diet. Uh, my friend Carl uh, wanted to try this. And as a commitment device, we thought we'll do a podcast. He's a professional podcaster. If he doesn't stick to the diet, it'll be obvious and he'll be embarrassed and humiliated and that'll make him stick to the diet. Right. So, and we thought Accountability have, on steroids, right? Exactly. Absolutely. We, exactly. And we thought we'd have like a hundred listeners, maybe two or 300 maximum. Yeah. And I said to Carl, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do 12 episodes to start off with. We'll see how we go. And then at the end of 12 episodes, I was enjoying myself. So I said, I'll, I'll give you a year. Um, and by this stage, we had thousands of people listening to us. Our most downloadable, our most downloaded episodes got over a hundred thousand downloads. So, you know, it's, it, it, we've got, uh, 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 we've been going for now for over two years. We've we've run a, a festival in Connecticut, uh, which I'll probably let Carl talk about because that's his hometown. Um, and we've gone from uh, strength to, to strength. We, we interviewed Tim Noakes. We interviewed Gary Taubes, Gary Fecky. We're not um, worthy. We're not <laughs> worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> Hey, uh, you know what? R that impressed me with Tim Noakes. All right. You know, yeah. hey, Richard, I needed you in the 90s. Where were you? That's what I'm <laughs> No, because... Tim I need no the, the lure of running yeah. got me hooked on carbohydrates. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was carbo loading, stacking every glucose in all my races, and then it was just awesome to know. You know, I, I follow Tim Notes, and, and <laughs> it was just great that he he was man enough to make a change and admit yes. he he made a mistake. Okay, in science, big man. He, went, he went with science. Mm. Awesome guy, uh, but but. I do owe some carbohydrates to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's our hero. Yeah, he's, so, he's great. One of them.
So we've had, a, we, you guys have talked a lot about the therapeutic uh, side of ketogenics, right? And mm -hmm. especially both of you coming from type two diabetes, losing all the weight that you've, that you've lost and, and changing your life in, in that perspective. I was on, it's interesting. I was on a, I get this all the time, but this is just a, a perfect example. Last weekend I was on a guy's trip and we went and we hiked some narrows in Southern Utah and, mm -hmm. um, it, it inevitably comes up. I'm not, I'm not a preacher of keto at all, except for on this podcast. <laughs> but uh, in my personal life, I'm really not a, pre a preacher, but it just comes up. I mean, it's just, it, it kind of encompasses your entire life when you're living it kind and you're does. experiencing the, the benefits, right? I mean, you're, you're, the, the energy benefits, the weight benefits, the, all of those things that you guys have already been talking about. But it came, it, it came up in this, in this setting of just a couple of dudes in the desert walking through some narrows, you know, some strange things come up in lots of conversation. <laughs> and one of the reasons I love doing it, but it, it was interesting to me as I was talking I got some pushback from a couple of the guys and they said, Hey, ah, oh, you know what? This is just another one of those fads that comes up <laughs> five years. And, uh, you know, it, it just, just give me two years and you'll be preaching about some other diet. Um, what do you guys, uh, I'll, I'll start with you, Richard. What do you say when somebody says that to you? Hey, this is, this is just another one of those fads. Another one will come up soon. I'm not going to follow that. I'm just going to live my life. Well, you know, the, uh, the evidence is that, this, that the ketogenic diet is how we have uh, evolved. And uh, we've certainly, uh, we wouldn't be able to survive periods before the invent, invention of agriculture uh, on a high carbohydrate diet because that kind of food only exists in a narrow band around the equator. And humans exist from, you know, Greenland to Tasmania. So, you know, that, that uh, they wouldn't be able to do it on a high carbohydrate diet. So, so the evidence is fairly clear that um, uh, Paleolithic humans pre uh, the invention of agriculture certainly lived on a ketogenic diet. So it's barely, it's hardly a fad. In fact, if you were to think fad. about it, it was exactly right. I mean, you know, the, the high carb, the high carb diet, um, the the certainly the 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 low fat diet has only been around since the uh, since nineteen eighty, and you know it's been a spectacular failure in being able to prevent obesity. Mm. You know the the and and the, it's funny because all of the dietetic organisations, the peak bodies, all say. Oh, you've got to lower saturated fat because it'll cause heart disease. You've got to lower total fat because that'll make you because it's highly caloric, and you need to increase carbohydrates because you need fiber, and fiber comes from carbohydrates. These are all tropes that that are incorrect, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they underpin they underpin the fad diet that we've been eating since 1980, which has been which has made us all sick and diabetic. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I, I would say that the fad diet is the low-fat diet, and uh, the evidence is that we've been uh, ketogenic for at least three hundred thousand years. I love I like that. Flipping people. it on its head. Sorry, go ahead, Carl. Oh, okay, what I like to tell people is, um, go go right ahead. Do you know eat your all bran and your or whatever you're going to eat and your sl shakes and slurries and franken food and you know right on with your bad self and you know when you're diabetic and you're going to lose toes just look up the ketogenic diet maybe i'll see you in 10 years <laughs> i love it i love both the answers you guys have flipped it right on its head eric you you talk a lot about this uh, idea yeah. of the evolution of the human of humankind and and we literally are evolved through this high fat diet for survival for purpose and for high functioning is there anything else you want to add to some of these thoughts that that both richard and carl have, have brought up yeah well i always go back to uh, the clinical studies the scientific research which you guys know as well as i know then you've in interviewed some of them that is just too much evidence coming out you know that's backing you know, you got your lipidologists, you got your cardiologists, you got your other scientists that are actually backing that high fat, you know, a higher fat, a, a low glucose is the way to go, you know. And so we're getting too, too many really educated, smart people uh, getting behind it. And, and that's great proof. I mean. Sure is. Not to mention all the thousands of people that 
you know, who know from uh, our ketogenic forums and who listen to our show and send us mail on a regular basis. Never seen one piece of mail that says, you know, I tried keto and my diabetes got worse. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Not one. And then guys like yeah. Dr. Westman, who's treated, you know, four or 5,000 patients over the last 10 years yeah. using only a ketogenic diet as the first line of defense and has had nothing but success with it. Yeah. And it's pretty exciting with uh, Verda Health out of San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, they've spent a lot of money. They've got some great researchers and doctors, everything behind it. So that's exciting. I, Steve you know, Finney, the godfather of the ketogenic diet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's pretty interesting as you, as you study some of the other fads, the other dieting fads that, that only held for a couple of years, a lot of them don't have a mass amount of medical and doctor backing um, and result backing. Honestly, mm -hmm. there might be some initial weight loss, but there's, there's these periphery uh, side effects that start happening and, and we just don't have that. I mean, the popularity of keto is getting, it's getting a lot of traction. There's a lot of buzz around it right now, but it's not new. I mean, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's as old as this earth is really. I mean, as, as old as the, hu as humankind is. And, and so that's, that's very interesting. I love your guys' answers and, and your take on that. What One thing also is, is a lot of misinformation. And so uh, if you just yeah. start Googling things, you're going to find every kind of flavor of what people consider to be ketogenic and uh, yeah. You know, when in reality, it's as simple as replace all the sugar and starch in your diet with healthy fat. Yeah. <laughs> and we, you know, that's, that's a big part of our mission and our crusade is to, to clear some of that, that, that junk that's out there about the ketogenic diet and try to provide as much legitimate information as we can. Um, I would say that kind of um, encompasses our mission as, as Life and Ketosis podcast. Our yeah, so, yeah, you know, we have that battle from aesthetics all the way to therapeutic, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, of course, aesthetics is fantastic, body composition, that's where it all starts, okay? But the therapeutic value of the beta hydroxybutyric molecule, which I talk about mm -hmm. a lot, is it's just fabulous. I mean, it's, it's endless, you know? And, and it's great that you guys took it therapeutic in the beginning, and look what you guys right. have, have created. Yeah, for me, it was all about saving my toes. I really didn't worry too much about body composition, you know. But um, <laughs> but I, I can I can now I can fast for five days and then yeah. go hop on my bike and ride around the lake in the middle of Canberra three times. Yeah. It's roughly a hundred kilometres. Uh, fasted. I don't have to worry about it fueling. I don't have to worry about energy. Um, awesome. I'll get off the I'll get off that bike and I'll have a feed, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I'm I'm ready, you know. But I'm a uh, bit peckish. I'm a bit peckish, and I'll have a, I'll have a giant steak because it's steak eating time. But you know, it's um it it that that's remarkable. I mean, who would have yeah. thought somebody who just going into this whole thing to save their toes yes. could do something? I mean, I would consider that superhuman. Hearing about that from another person, from an athlete. Yeah. And I'm, do, I'm out there doing it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It really is. It's awesome. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Well, you both, uh, one thing that strikes me as I've, as I've heard the podcast, read some of the information on the website and different things that you guys are doing. One thing I love is that you're both seem to be foodies. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe to my detriment, but, uh, that's, that's the way it goes, you know? Yeah, well, I want to talk to you a little uh, bit about love that. To, love to cook and eat before. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. I'm sorry to interrupt you there. No problem. Um, but one thing that we get a lot, especially people that are new to keto information, is isn't it hard to eat keto? <laughs> isn't it difficult? I, I don't want to have to, you know, I don't want to have to complicate my eating life. Mm. Um, and one thing that strikes me about you guys that I love is that you have fun with it. It seems right. I, I'm not yeah, there with you, but, but it seems from a distance yeah. that you have a lot of fun with it. Um, and that you've created a functional way of eating in, in ketosis. I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, maybe, um, Maybe Carl, we can start with you. Sure. Where was where was kind of this uh, affinity for food born, and and how do you apply it to your keto lifestyle? 
my affinity for food was born with me in 1967. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's been with me all my life. I think. Genetic. <laughs> uh, maybe genetic, maybe genetic. environmental, but uh, yeah. I, you know, and, and sweets Let me... and stuff were a big part of my growing up. But I've 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 been cooking like loving to cook since I was in my late teens. Hmm. Yeah. I came to it a lot later. I started cooking when I was like in my mid forties. So, uh, and Carl and I came up with this idea that, that, that cooking is the way to inoculate your ki your kids from obesity, teach yeah. kids how to cook, teach mm -hmm. them what makes up food, how you put together ingredients to make meals. Um, those are, those are things that I, certainly boys missed out on. I mean, I, when I was growing up, boys don't cook, you know, yeah. you, you go, you go from your mother cooking your meals to finding a wife to cook your meals and you don't learn to cook. And, and I missed out there because cooking is awesome. Uh, I, I really enjoy, I've, I've, I've developed a passion for it in my mid forties and um, you know, that's so, and now, and now I just love posting food porn on Instagram, the <laughs> stuff that I've cooked, stuff that I've cooked and, you know, it's, it's uh, a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of fun. That's interesting. I, yeah, go ahead. I got to say, I used to cook a lot more and a lot more diverse things when I started keto because I was so afraid that I was going to miss, you know, crunchy crackers. And so I was making cheese crisps every day. And I was so afraid I was going to miss uh, sweet things. So I was making chocolate mousse all the time with xylitol or whatever. And those things were fun. But after a while, you just don't need any of that stuff. And you just start eating because of the the simple pleasure that it gives you and the, the sustenance that it gives you. Like your body says, I want more uh, pork butt with a really fatty ghee sauce <laughs> over it with the drippings, you know? And yeah. so, you know, like for the last two, for two weeks in a row, that's all I eat, <laughs> you know, like seriously, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and I'm completely happy with that. I don't, I don't feel like I'm missing And losing anything. weight. Yeah. And losing and weight at the same weight. time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is an idea that Eric teaches all the time is you start looking at your food as fuel instead of pleasure. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have pleasure in cooking right. or preparing right. or eating or any of that kind of stuff. I still really enjoy my food, but it sure. also has this, this stronger backbone behind it of this is fueling my body in a way that it's meant to be fueled. Yeah. Um, anything to add to that, Eric? I, I mean, I know we beat no. that like a dead horse yeah. on this podcast, but man, it's such a good principle. Well, I think I need to learn to be more of a foodie, but <laughs> I'm one of those guys that's pretty repetitious in, in my macros and my aminos and my fat and all that. Yeah. I, I probably need to enjoy life a little more, but, <laughs> but you know, it, it's nothing about preparation because I, I love to prepare my food, but you know, with keto, it's been so simple. You know, I intermittent fast and I got two meals a day and I, I love my cruciferous vegetables, big salads. That's just me. I mean, if you like pork butt, I love a big salad, not because I'm saying that's healthier or better. Okay. But it's just something that, that, that I enjoy. You know, a lot of people think I'm not enjoying those salads, but no, I think it's great, you know, to really push the, and I love your menus and I, I, I think, I think it's great to make, make food fun actually <laughs> what's weird is that people when they when they were approaching the ketogenic diet i know i was certainly like this you can't imagine yourself like you know you hear us talking about oh i only eat you know pork butt for two weeks and i <laughs> or a salad every day you know like i can't imagine myself liking that you know mm -hmm. but i think what you're not imagining is the removal of the addictive uh, drive that you have for carbohydrates that you don't even realize you're addicted mm, to. And it is right. more like a drug reaction, a dopamine yeah. reaction, a, you know, than, than a, uh, sure a true is. hunger signal. And so you can't imagine yourself, if you have poison ivy, you can't imagine yourself not being able to scratch it. But can you imagine Ooh. yourself without poison ivy? Yeah. <laughs> That's the goal, right? Yeah. I like yeah. that. So as you guys, you guys come up with a lot of new recipes or, or maybe tweaked recipes or that kind of stuff. As you approach a new meal, how, I mean, what's the basis for your thought patterns or, or how are you, like, what are you, what are you basing it all on? And then kind of riffing, if that makes sense. And, and either of you are, are welcome to jump in on this. How can I use pork? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that pork. I love it. Yeah, I do. I, so, I like it. 
<laughs> one of the recipes that I did at Keto Fest was I took a slow cooker and I took a big bolar roast, which is a it's a it's a it's a part of the, of the cow. It's a chuck roast, yeah. And uh, and I I I'd previously roast because at Keto Fest we do cooking demonstrations and it's a, a thirty minute demonstration. I don't have much time to be able to do a to do a meal. Um, yeah. So, so what I did was I put the pork, I put this, um, this uh, bowl I roast on uh, the night before. So it had 12 hours in the slow cooker. And so it was just like, it had been stewing in its own juices for 12 hours. Maybe I threw in a bay leaf, a bit of salt and pepper and a bit of stock. And that was it. So, so what I did was uh, in front of this audience, I, I got two forks and I shredded the whole thing up. And all of the juices that it was in all went into those fibers and it became basically pulled beef. So there I've got a recipe. I've got a, a big, big old pot of pulled beef. I'm doing a 30 minute demonstration and I decide, okay, I'm going to do six different recipes, six different meals. <laughs> and we had an audience of like 60 people and I'm going to give, I'm going to make 60 portions of six different meals in the remaining 23 minutes of my presentation. I thought and it was nuts. Yeah, they all thought I was nuts. So, 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 and it's it's very simple that that that, wow. and we've got it on our blog, and we've got a video of it on YouTube of the entire process. But essentially, what you do is you 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 t you take this four kilogram roast, you shred it all up, and you put it in plastic bags, two hundred grams a bag, and you roll them up, and you put them in the freezer, and you forget about them, and when you're ready to make a meal, you pull it out of the freezer, you throw it in the microwave, you give it two minutes in the microwave, you throw it in a frying pan, and then you start putting in flavours, and we did uh, Thai, we did an, uh, a curry, we did um, Philly cheesesteak, uh, we did, um, mm. I, I, I'm forgetting all, oh, a taco, a taco yeah. meat, Right. Uh, we did a Hungarian goulash uh, style meal. Um, that's five. There was one more. Uh, <laughs> oh, crazy. So, 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 but the 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 trick is that if, in this case is to is to make your food in bulk so that you you spend you know you you, you set your meat meat off for twelve hours looking after itself. Mm -hmm. You then shred it. You put it into bags and you bag it all up into portions in your freezer. And I have an entire tray of my freezer. Uh, full of uh, pulled beef and another one full of pulled pork. And, you know, <laughs> I'll just grab one of those out and I'll make a meal as I go. And then I'll maybe chuck together a fennel salad or, you know, something like that, or maybe spinach and, and cheese or whatever. You spend all day Sunday, you know, once a week sort of prepping right. all these little things that are going to make up the ingredients for your, for your meals later in the week. And then you just have to focus on the flavors and the fresh flavors, which, you know, your fresh herbs and, yeah. mm -hmm. and salads and things like that. Yeah. Hmm. My my freezer looks like a prepper's nightmare. <laughs> 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 That's I love that. So so just to to boil that down is create a base, which mm -hmm. you're in this case you're you're presenting a meat, maybe a pulled pork or a pulled beef yeah. as a base, and yeah. then just go off your variations after that. Take a portion of that and create a variation of it. Maybe think of a theme, a culture, a, a part of the world. Go off yeah. of that, create some fresh flavors. I love that. That's awesome. It's like, it's like pulled beef jazz. <laughs> and yet, at that point, you're just riffing. Riff yeah, there you go. Yeah. Kind of, kind of. Am. I love yeah. that. So you... I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to top that for Keto Fest this year because we've got Keto Fest coming up on July 20, 21 weekend. Mm. And I'm going to have to go bigger. I'm going to have to go. It's going to have to be like eight <laughs> meals. And uh, <laughs> maybe I'm on pork. <laughs> well, we'll try to get some sleep before that one. I, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's fantastic. I love. I you knew where I was going next. I want to. I just want to briefly talk about Keto Fest, or give sure. you guys an opportunity to talk about Keto Fest. Uh, it sounds like Carl, you're the one that you're the one to do that. But tell us yeah. what Keto Fest is, um, a little bit about the philosophy behind it, and uh, and how people can find more information. Well, it's a festival. It's uh, not a conference. Conferences are for people. I'm sorry. Conferences are for professionals. Festivals are for people. So I wanted to do something different. I was actually at a software development conference, I think, Richard, wasn't I? Mm, yeah. And I just had this idea because some of my favorite software conferences 
are when there's extracurricular activities that are more social. Like they have a band, they have, you know, people showing how to do raspberry Pi stuff with kids or, you know, there's like stuff to do. That's not mm -hmm. just sitting in a lecture hall going, yes. Yeah, okay. That's awesome. And, <laughs> you know, in some stale hotel room somewhere. So I had this idea that we're going to have food and we're going to have bands and we're going to have, you know, uh, lessons and walking tours of the town and fitness lessons and, and on top of all that, you know, maybe a pig roast, which is sort of the thing. I, and it turns out that we did a pig roast. Mm, we did. <laughs> and uh, oh, wow. and then on top of that, have another day that's your typical conference where you have lectures and you have the doctors and the scientists and stuff getting up there and actually doing talks. Um, so so it was a, a, a dual thing. So that's the philosophy that we wanted a day, uh, a social Saturday. And we also wanted to involve the town. So like I said, walking tours, Segway tours, but also involve the restaurants. We educated about eight or nine chefs in these restaurants and, and came up with stuff that they could serve on their menu that was ketogenic. And then we put those dishes in the program and gave yeah. people coupons to go to the restaurants to spend them. How cool. And once we convinced them that we weren't just trying to scam, you know, coupons <laughs> that were only redeemed uh they all got on board all except for yeah. one which we we'll probably get on board this year and uh it, it just worked out it worked out great and this is in carl's hometown uh in new right. london connecticut it's sort of halfway between boston and new york on the train so it's really easy for people to get there mm -hmm. and the the secret sauce the reason why we were able to do this is that Car carl is actually uh carl's not just a ketogenic guru he's not just a software guru he's also a very famous musician and in my uh, town he, anyway in his own town <laughs> <laughs> everyone in town everyone in town knows Carl. Carl context Frank, matters right <laughs> exactly yeah. you walk in the front door of any of the joints in new london and whoever is the band who is on duty at the moment somebody will get on the microphone and say carl franklin in the house <laughs> 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 literally as you walk it through the door so so he's quite famous so so the, so everybody knew he was and so when he went to people he already had an established relationship with them and so it, we were able to get this all up but the the biggest thing for for people who came to the to the event were the restaurants i mean everyone had gone to conferences where they get to see eric westman or uh, jeffrey gerber or Ivor cummins speak i mean that is great and most people have seen cooking recipes cooking demos and that was great too but the biggest effect for people was going out at night on a Saturday to a restaurant where the, the wait staff knew about ketogenic food, the, the owner of the bar had just gone ketogenic in the past month himself, uh, every, everybody else, every other table in the restaurant was full of pe people eating ketogenic. We had people coming up to us in tears saying, I'm used to being the one weird person in town that does this stuff and I'm in a room and everybody's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that, that was a, it was, it was quite cathartic for people, you know, to, 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 to just not have to worry, go out for dinner, not have to worry. Mm -hmm. That's so fun. I think that's uh, that's every keto person's dream, right? Is just to be able exactly. to walk into a restaurant and look at a few items on the menu and not worry if it's going to, or not have to make modifications with the waiter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, do, you know, if I ask for butter, am I going to get oleo, like melted margarine, all these little details, you know, is there yeah. any sugar in the rub on those ribs? Yep. You know? Yeah. We don't have to be those weirdos anymore. Ask nope. those questions, right? That, that yeah. sounds fun. Go to a restaurant that's willing to sell you a pint of bacon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a pint glass full of bacon. That was an appetizer. A pint glass that was full one of bacon. The appetizers. Yeah. Yep. I love that. Yeah. I could eat a pint of a pint of bacon any day. That's great. <laughs> I'm eating one right now. <laughs> 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 that's fun well this has been awesome you guys as we wrap up is there anything else that we did not cover or i mean i'm sure there's tons that we did not cover but anything you want to make sure our audience knows about uh keto fest two keto dudes or carl and richard in, in general what what do you what do you want to leave our audience with yeah i can do this so we have several resources um first is our podcast two keto dudes which you can find on your favorite podcast player we also have a website for that to ketodudes.com and that's the number two k-e-t-o dudes 
Um, we also started a forum and we didn't talk about the origin of the forum, but it was a Facebook group that we started and we grew very fast and there was like 14,000 people on there. And um, I don't know if you guys have your own Facebook group, but after a while it becomes like kindergarten Yeah. and people are very immature. And uh, a lot of the reason is that the, the data, the, the posts don't persist. So the information isn't searchable. Um, we, we've tested that theory. You can't search for something that somebody wrote uh, just a couple of days ago. You won't find it. Yeah. So the, it's this constant stream of consciousness and people, we, we felt we were answering the same questions over and over and over again. And then it, people are jumping <laughs> ugly with us. And yeah, it's like whack-a-mole. So yeah. we gave it a Viking funeral and started a forum with a software called Discourse, which was uh, written by some brilliant people who were trying to address this problem, particularly around Facebook and around, uh, um, you know, these problems <clears throat> of dealing with people. So it's a self-policing sort of, uh, self-sustaining forum and it's at forum.2keto.com it's completely free we've now got about 16,000 members and there's very very few things that we have to police every once in a while some will jump in there and try to sell something that's bull crap you know that <laughs> last and show them the door but for the most part it's and, and you can search for anything and find it doesn't matter when it was written uh, so there's the forum that's well, an the incredible other thing resource is, Oh, it's a great resource. The other thing is uh, Keto Fest. If you're interested in that, go to ketofest.com and the, that will take you to wherever the, the latest information or Kickstarter is about that. And then we've got some other things that we've got a, a video channel, video, uh, youtube.2keto.com, where you can see sort of our podcasts uh, you know, and uh, other videos that we've made. There's a, another one, science.2keto.com, where Richard and I called together our favorite studies and the most critical studies that, that you need to show your doctor. Um, and just a few of them. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's we incredible. Have a, that's there's awesome. a video series that we did too at fix.2keto.com, which is the two keto dudes fix diabetes. Good. Yeah. I love, I love that you mentioned, um, people educating their doctors cause that's really what's happening right now. Oh, is, sure. Because people are, are educating their physicians rather than the reverse, and yeah. and that's cool. Um, I like to say, if you can't change your doctor, change your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Good. That's good. Eric, anything else you want to make sure we leave our audience with after this conversation with two keto dudes? No, I think it went great. I I got nothing to add. I usually do, but no, I think these guys are great. And yeah, you guys are so fun. We think yeah. you guys are great too. Keep doing what yeah, you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah the more of us are doing it, the better. That's right. Exactly. The more the more good information we can get out there, the better. Agreed. <laughs> and maybe I'll be out at the keto fest. We'll come out and see you. <laughs> that would be so much fun. Oh, that It'd would be, be a lot of fun. Yeah. It'd be great. It'd be great. I'd love that. All right. Well, I want to thank Carl, Richard, and Eric for biohacking with us today. And I want to thank you for joining us on this quest for optimal fitness. If you're ready to begin your own journey and live your life in ketosis, be sure to check out biofitcoaching.com or biofitcoaching on Facebook. And until next time, stay keto.